Welcome no, back. No, Bob Lazar's not. Well, he was a prostitute. <laughs> he was caught with prostitutes. Did you watch the? Yeah, I just. Did watched you actually it. watch it? It was amazing. I think he's legit. I, I think, think he's, he's completely legit. fucking legit. <laughs> I think he's legit. Welcome back dude. to Beyond the Pine 104, I think it is. Hey, Steve's here with us today. Special guest, special James. Guest. Ooh, I'm actually not officially where's part of Sugar Pine 7 anymore, so I'm a guest now. That's where, right. I get the guest where's rate. Steve. James is back, so we decided we got to tone it down and bring it back yeah, to Yeah, I wasn't a fan of ourselves. the professionalism of the set last week, um, so I wanted to bring it back to our roots, which was uh, Steve's stink bed. Why don't you like good sets? I just think... A lack of quality shows remorse, character. Right. Same thing. Yeah. Sorry, I keep thinking that the little thing in Particles my eye is a around. bug. Right. It's I get a lot a of those. Of I get a lot of those where I'll see a floater in my eyeball and I try to catch it. Yeah. My Never o- fucking mine get always it. look like dragons and worms. It. Really? Mine. Are, I have worms. See. Yeah, you do actually have fucking worms yeah. in your eyes. That's so this crazy. podcast has a sponsor, boys. By who? Do, well, do, the very do. first sponsor this week is HoneyBook. Do, 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 do. Gra-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. If you run your own business, you're used to doing it all. Yeah. But if you're struggling to get through your to-do list, HoneyBook can help. When you started your business... How can they help, Steve? When you started your business, did you dream about all those admin tasks like drafting proposals and contracts and tracking down payments? If that wasn't part of your vision, you need HoneyBook. HoneyBook is an online business management tool that organizes your client communications, bookings, contracts, and invoices all in one place. Mm. HoneyBook makes it simple to run your business better. Professional templates, e-signatures, and built-in automation keep uh, keeps everything on track mm. and makes you look good. Yes. They can even cons- consolidate. I just learned that word wow. uh, a couple days ago. They can even consolidate services you already use like QuickBooks, Google Suite, Excel, and MailChimp slash Gmail. It's day uh, 168. I still don't know what MailChimp is, but someone out there does. I'll tell you what it is. Want me to tell you what it is? It's the number one choice for client and business management for freelancers and business owners. Save time and do more of what you love with HoneyBook. And right now, HoneyBook is offering our listeners 50% off when you visit tryhoneybook.com slash pine. Pine. Mm, Payment is flexible, and this promotion applies whether you pay monthly or annually. Woo-wee! Monthly. Go to, I'll pay annually. Go tryhoneybook.com. I mean, sorry, go to tryhoneybook.com. <laughs> Silly me, slash pine for 50% off your first year. That's tryhoneybook.com slash pine. Slash pine. Thank you, Honeybook, for sponsoring the podcast. No problem, Steve. Okay. Question for you, Steve. Are you fucking kidding me? With what? How great all that sounded? That was a no. great ad read. Thanks, man. They're usually all really great. That one was great. For the most part, this one was really great. Thank you, guys. Why are you so complimentary this morning? You're looking great. Yeah. And hot. Thank you. And serious. I am actually very serious. Yeah, you look serious. Have, <laughs> I don't have time for this, you guys. I'm being serious. <laughs> when did you get a fucking coffee machine in here? I wouldn't have ordered coffee if I knew you had fucking coffee. <laughs> Dude, you have it on top of your mixer? No, I don't. Yeah, you fucking do. It's on I top of your dog. Don't. You have a coffee machine what right the there. Fuck, man? And if that drips down onto it, why don't you oh, it short will... circuit it, bro. Oh why don't my you, god. Why don't you and you already have fucking electric volts going through you every 30 seconds. And you're gonna do that, and it's gonna what? end don't you. What don't you guys for understand good. about me trying to become a superhero? Dude, what that's not how you that? do it, man. You need like a spider to bite you. You need some a fucking shit. spider. Ever heard of electrocute? That's gonna be my superhero name. <laughs> electrocute. <laughs> you can't. It's a cross between electro and execute. Ooh, hold on, guys. This is weird. Coffee's done. But you know what? At least, at least it now doesn't smell like sh- dog shit in this room. And now it's well, smells smell like dog shit because of the salon. Like, good. Um, goodness. Smell mine. Check this out. Get right in there. Smell. Yeah. Do you Yours guys? Is like fresh good job, day. dude. That's bad. <laughs> Do you guys need some uh, reading for this podcast? Would you guys how to like raise sheep? Reading? Yeah. Let me take. Hey. This is should what. We, <laughs> should we read how to raise oh, a Larson. sheep? Why don't you guys read a passage from it? Okay. <laughs> so let's ship. Right in. For See, all you guys who didn't watch last week. Do you like week, the Old Testament or the New Testament? <laughs> <laughs> this is Old Testament shit, Wait, man. before, real quick, speaking of the Bible, did you see the clip of fucking Trump talking about yes. his favorite oh book? Oh my God, dude, that was... S- Are you an Old Testament kind of guy or New Testament? Wait, um, no, I really don't like to talk about it because that's a very personal thing. Okay, well, I just want to... What's your favorite? No, no, no I'm not going to talk about okay, it. Okay, are you an Old Testament guy or New Testament guy? Uh, you know, it's all great. It's all got great things. Um, I, like I said, I really don't want to get into it. Okay. Is that the extent of it? He, well, That's it was much what he more. Said. He was like, it's a great book, a fabulous book. It's my favorite book in the world. It's great. It's just such a great book, you know? Like, he talks That's, about it like it's a I fucking book joking. from an author. 
You right? Know? Like I was like, like it's not Harry Potter that's not four, like bro. How, that's not how. Um, Dude, he's never heard of the Testament. <laughs> Testaments it is new. Is that by J.K. Rowling? Is that Older by J.K. Rowling? Is that by Jake Rowling? <laughs> Dude, it was fucking amazing. That was like he's like a little kid lying. He's like a 12 year old lying, I, and it's so dude, transparent. It's like you and the interviewer get knew. political on the podcast. You fucking right. no, this is just it right. fucking no, literally. Right. Hey, if it hey, was, hey, if it was, if I'm right, percent of our audience right? is right wing. Trump so. wings, yeah. Trump wings. <laughs> you know Inspector Trump wings. <laughs> you know Inspector Trump wings. <laughs> the ninja detective. Ninja Trump wings. detective. I met Ninja. Did I show you guys and tell you guys that? Yeah, you yeah. sent me a text saying, Met Tifu. Send me the same text. <laughs> Met Tifu. Dude, I wish I was like this in the picture. Where did you uh where'd you meet him? A little place called Catch. You know Billy out there? His uh friend is like Don't make really friends. good friends with Tifu and they played really? Fortnite together, Billy and Tifu. Wow. He's like, Hey, you know a Fortnite guy named Tifu? And I was like, Yeah. Yeah, I heard of him. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Yeah, I heard of him. Why? And he's like, uh, oh, I don't know. He was we were just all playing the other night. And I was like, was he really good? <laughs> I was like, how good was he? He's like, oh, I don't know. I don't really play the game. How many kills did he get? <laughs> hey, uh, Billy. Did, yeah. he, did he drop a 20 bomb? <laughs> <laughs> Better than really hell. What is it? 20, 20 bomb? 20 bomb? 20 bomb. Yeah. Billy, did he, <laughs> did he drop <laughs> did a Billy. 20 Billy. kills? I'll tell you exactly what happened. Billy, shut the fuck it. up. He dropped out of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Went to the block. Thank the bus driver. Thank the bus driver. <laughs> Obviously. God willing. <laughs> God willing. He thanked the bus driver, Ninja Willing. <laughs> <laughs> he went to the block. He, no, actually, he always drops media now. He always drops media because he can laser people. I don't know what that means, man. <laughs> Fuck, no, man. Not, you know the big ass meteor that's. I haven't. I've only played season ten once with you the other day when we did Team Rumble. I'm playing World of Warcraft. I love now, Team Rumble. You guys, instead of that. That's a very dangerous, slippery slope you're traveling on right now. You think? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm already playing fucking World of Kings, which is a WoW clone for Emma, your phone, and I'm fucking playing. <laughs> I'm also playing WoW is King, which is a clone for your phone. War- <laughs> can you play the new World of Warcraft? On your phone? No, you can't. <laughs> they should oh, like yeah, we're gonna read even read a they made RuneScape for the phone. They need and they made Maple Story for the phone. And now they just need World of Warcraft. Can, can you let phone? James read a passage from How to Raise Right, sheep, please. Choose I'm older playing. New Testament. And would you take it seriously, James? I'm gonna tell you this really fun game that I'm playing, and okay. you're actually gonna like this one. Seriously, cool. so shut it's the fuck up and listen. Did you hear that? Sorry, sure, yeah. I did lash out. I did. Yeah. It's called Sorry. Hungry Shark. Hungry Shark. And that's all I'm going to tell you about it. And you're going to get it, and you're going to love it. And ge- it? guess you, what it's about? You go in the water, shark. there's a shark, and you have to eat all the other fish and people. No, because fish aren't friends and food are people. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we're going to read an excerpt of um, from, I think this is actually biblically canon. Yeah, so oh, yeah. Sheep. Dash. yeah, this is, uh, oh, this is one of the books Wasn't that this the, Matthews, the Catholic Mark's Church took out. Hmm? It, uh, written by Matthews, Mark, and Luke and John. No, this was written by the FFA. Never heard of her. So let's just go ahead and get right in here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Steve just sharded his pants. There's a secret note. Treasure map? Probably a DVD. Dude! <laughs> what the fuck? Is that That's Alyssa so and her high school dude, sweetheart? Dude, that's her bookmark in this. That's so funny. Dude, he's the one that got away. Dude, was this like... <laughs> this <laughs> and, so and you're <laughs> dude, oh wow, that stinks. Dude, this Fuck. is literally Alyssa and the one that got away. Oh my god. And she keeps this with her. Ow! Dude, you fucking moved her spot. She was reading that every night and read with this. She would have mentioned right it to here, me. Man. I need it back. She hasn't finished the book yet. Wait, she started in 2007. A special a message. Why are you bending it, man? You're fucking know, bending man. it. Does she fucking want that? Dude, this is you. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the, why were you holding it like this? Dude, wait. Oh, I lost what the am spot. I trying to do? What if I just left this out on my desk or like yeah. hung it up? Dude, every night you should before put you go it to in bed. a fucking frame. Dude. Put that picture in a frame and put it on the wall. Every night before you go to bed. To the guy. This might have been the guy that like whose dad was in the mob. No, that's just the one that no, got that's away. Jamie. <laughs> right. Dude. Right, 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 right. That's so funny. In Hawaii, uh, Jim took out, uh, Lauren's stepdad, Jim, took out a picture in his Jim. wallet. You know Jim. Took From out, the office? Took out a picture in his wallet, and it was of Lauren at prom with her, like, the guy she went to prom with. And I was you like, were jealous? And I, no, I was like, why are you carrying that picture around? 
<laughs> Dude, he doesn't acknowledge you at all. Can we please read so a passage uh, from How to Raise Sheep? So please, funny. James. And did he keep it? Distract. Did he rip it I'm trying it to find the good this one. This one's a good one. I still okay. have questions about no. that. Did he put it back in his wallet after? Okay. So let's see here. Difficult birth assistance. Helping deliver a lamb requires cleanliness, patience, perseverance, Would you read and it gentleness. Better? Rushing a birth does not work well and can lead to further complications and permanent entry to ooze. Don't know that word. Ooze? E W E S. Oh, that's you. That's a child goat. Okay. Well, these are about lamb. Well, they're called Billy. So. When lambs need to be pulled, a steady, gentle, but firm pressure works best. Some birthing tips include wash your hands and arms with soap and water, giving Duh. it a nice chop. Do the chop on the neck. A nice breaking lamb, neck, a nice slide lamb out. chop. Cover your hands and the ooze vulva oh, with a disinfectant liquid soap. Apply lubricant to your hand and arm. Be sure your fingernails are closely trimmed before assisting, or use latex gloves that. if available. Well, you're not. Are you saying? Okay. No, I'm not. Avoid trim tearing my the cervix. Oh, uh, avoid tearing the cervix with your fingernails. Mm. Manually stretching the cervix and pulling too rapidly. A circus. Avoid tearing the circus. No. No, no, you're right. You're the right. Circus My bad. Ten. This isn't about circus. Both of them make sense. Never apply traction to the lamb until it is in a position to be properly delivered. Assemble the lamb after all the pieces come out. <laughs> Assemble the lamb. Continue, Assem please. Continue, please. Assemble supplies prior to lambing. <laughs> to lambing? Yeah. That's the verb of delivering a lamb? Well, that's just the verb for any kind of lamb You guys want to go fucking lambing this weekend? Yeah. Yeah, where you pick one up and you check it off the cliff. Oh, fuck. I love lambing. It's where I like to throw rocks or drop them off of a highway free overpass onto lambs. <laughs> onto more lambs. Because <laughs> it's just a bunch of lambs on the highway running. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Highway. The supplies include lubricant, head snare. Oh, that's like a, for drums. Right. You need, a <laughs> you need a snare so that when the baby's pulled, it's... You can organize them. Dude, you need Drum a roll, please. The baby's almost out. Um, restraining. Got a stand up comedian over here. Yeah. <laughs> restraining halters for the ears. We need a restraining order for this second lamb. You need antibiotics in case you get infected by the infected. <laughs> <laughs> you need towels for uh, rubbing one out. You need a tincture of. A tincture? Tincture of THC, approximately 44%. You need a lamb feeding tube for the weak lambs because. Everyone knows that a lamb is born with no jaw. I want to so know. Like flap of. I want to no. know who the fuck no. needed to read all of this and didn't have someone to just explain didn't most have of like it, or to demonstrate. An older farmer to help. Yeah, there's. I think I'm gonna get into that, farming. That reminds me of something that you learn. Like a psychopath reads. Ah, oh, I know how to this do This is it. how I raise baby lamb. I'm gonna do this to a woman. Bring the lamb out. <laughs> Bring the lamb out. <laughs> and then actually pulls the lamb out. And she's. <sighs> no, that's just something that you don't learn from a class or books. You learn that from growing up on a farm and doing it since you're seven years old. Right. You learn that from watching videos of it on the dark web. <laughs> so that's how I learned. <laughs> Watch this. You can't even fucking hit me. For audio listeners, I'm dodging the bullets that James is. Audio hey. listeners, I'm now cutting Phyllis's head off with a chainsaw. <laughs> Dude, I laughed so fucking hard. I'm now cutting Phyllis's head off with a chainsaw. Mine. Do you remember that scene? From The Office? Yeah. Do you remember That's what happened so before? good, dude. Man, I was going to talk, but I'm so warm because there's a beam yeah, of you sunlight have direct directly. Why don't you right? close that, bud? It's is it making you fucking, sleepy? It is. Um, and it's bumming me out. But Dude. I'm back on Adderall, so nothing really Dude. bums me out now. Oh, me I too. see. Cheers. Mine's getting your tears. Cheers. I'm trying to burn my tattoo off. Mm. Yeah, this is going to be a bummer 10 years from now when I forget you guys completely. Wow. I doubt you'll be able to. I'm memorable. No, I'm kidding. I already got, another, I got another tattoo. It says Kib and James. It's of James's glasses. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and what's the wording this underneath? It pleasantly made me laugh. It's a uh, James's <laughs> glasses made out of killing it. It says killing it, but in big letters. Right. So and you so can't really tell. What does that glasses. mean? What it does means, that the tattoo mean? It means mean? you go out in the world, you get back whatever you're putting in. So you go outside, you put some fucking tattoo wheels in the world, and then you're gonna get back truck. And that's facts. Okay, facts. I love it. Do you want to hear some more? Mm -hmm. Yes. Big back stool, and then you go outside, you trade it, and go to Trader Joe's. Pet, pet, pet. You know the Trader Joe's right over there. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised. I was surprised. You didn't know it was there? No, I actually didn't know there was a Trader Joe's right there. It's very close. 
Um, Dude, it's on. It's within walking distance. I don't know why, but if I was on a good day, still like you remind minutes. me of iDubs a bit in a good way. Anyways, what he's saying is, did you watch? Good um, to see you. Did James? Do you think he watched what we watched? No. The iDubs video. No, I don't full think he even force. knows who iDubs is. I've seen that. You watched Full Force? Yeah. <laughs> you did? I watched. Here's what happened. I started to watch it. You didn't I, watch all 30 minutes of it? No. Dude, it was more than 30 minutes. It was like 50 minutes. Well, whatever it was, it felt like 30 minutes. It flew by. I know. Let me, let me tell you something that, that's funny. I saw the video of that kid doing the lightsaber battle and falling Ooh. over in a cringe oh. in a cringe compilation. And then randomly, th- I saw that video and I was like, what is this? I've never ever watched an iDubs video before. Oh, he's so I clicked on it and then I was That's like, funny. what are the odds? I just saw this guy in a cringe compilation. The odds are pretty What's the good. Funny part? It was just so uh, baffling. <laughs> it was just so bizarre. <laughs> it was just so much bathtub. So you didn't watch the whole Full Force video? No, I think I had to go. Oh, so you <laughs> said you saw it. and then Why wouldn't you watch the whole no, Full I Force video? No, I think I had to stop no, watching it. Lauren didn't it. want me to watch it. Oh, she was like, That's very mean. controlling. Dude, you oh. missed... If you stopped watching it, that means you missed the best part of the video, which was the second interview. Yeah, holy shit! It's a it's an unbelievable person. It's that an unbelievable is out there person living. that's out there living. Stop just saying the same thing that I <laughs> I'm said. Not just saying the same thing that you say. You tried to say the same thing that I, I said. Tried to say the same thing you said. Anybody who loves Star Wars as much as me, Ooh. he's my friend. <laughs> no, he was. I think he turned out to genuine, genuine, gen. I think he's Anyways. a good guy. Dude, I does to do the, a video on you. There's nothing to do a video about. I'm bored. Holy shit, dude. That would be amazing. Idub spends a day with Steven Suptic. <laughs> no. Steven just... Talk, talk about a snooze fest. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, I don't, I don't have, have time, time for this. this. I'm serious. I'm serious, you guys. I don't have time for this. I, I need to get going. going. I have to be going. I'm serious. I don't have time for this. Can you please let me leave? Yeah, I'm go ahead. Here. Get the fuck out of here, man. time is up. Get the podcast the fuck is over. Do you think we've I'm gone? Up, do you think we've gone to sixty minutes? Where's my fucking coffee, man? Hey, have you guys ever been to SeaWorld? No, yeah, I'm, one time. I, I don't did I support ever tell it, you? Was it? Why would I ask then? So, <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's funny what happened to me. Did it? Just a quick question. Did it seem like there was animal cruelty going on there when you were there? Did it seem weird? Was like there's something off? Well, here's were here's, the rides cool? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's why I can't answer that part. I didn't get there till about two or three in the afternoon because hey, um, as a kid, anytime uh, we were ever going to go to an amusement park, my mom always threw a fit early in the morning because she's crazy mm. and we'd end up leaving until one or two. Mm. So we That's got there about so three fucking o'clock. Annoying. Yeah, we got there about three o'clock. Closes like six thirty. <laughs> Dude, right. you're literally so drove to San Diego. So how long were you this there? This is you as a kid. Mom, bitch, this is SeaWorld. I'm serious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Smack that ass. Nice. So... My funny story about SeaWorld, I got stuck on Journey to Atlantis. <laughs> How'd that happen, bud? You got stuck oh. on fucking Journey to Atlantis. <laughs> Idiot. Well, Too hot. I mean, it, wasn't my, it wasn't my... Uh, nah, it's perfect. It wasn't my fault. You I got controlled stuck. it. Okay. Just strong. So we get in the ride, and it's like the one like big roller coaster they have there. I don't know. Again, this is in like 2006 is or 7. Is it the blue one that goes up and up and up? and then I don't know. There could be a lot more rides there now. Sure, man. This is in like 2006. I was just trying to... Help you out. This was, I think, at the time, like the only actual roller coaster that they had. Actual. So actual roller coasters the that rest I had there. The other ones coasters. were like all the cons of rides. Yeah. So we get in. We're going in. Oh. Let's come on. We're experiencing technical difficulties. The whales will be with you shortly. The, wha- <laughs> the whales are on top of the rails. <laughs> the whales are on the track. My coffee's arriving. Good. Good. So yeah, so I got stuck the on there. Got stuck on it like at this angle, you know, when you're going up to go on a drop, and then they turn the lights and they're like, they come up on the fucking wet ass stairs, metal stairs on the side of the track, whoa, 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 whoa. and then they come out and like undo the things Dude, manually. All we the get out. That walk up the stairs that work there. Whoa, 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 it's like whoa. Thomas Jane from Deep Blue Sea. He's just like <laughs> constantly slipping. Dude. He slips so many times in that movie. So realistic. And e- but yeah, he's you the only slip. one because everyone else is like running normally and there's he's the only good water actor in that movie. and he's just slipping on everything. He's a great actor. I Dude, a lot of people don't like Thomas Jane. They think he's a really bad actor. You know uh, what? The Mist? There was, um, so Thomas Jane, they were talking You like about, The Mist, right? Yeah. I love it. It's it's amazing. It's so underrated. People are like, I don't like the ending. It's the only ending I've ever seen Actually, like that. Actually, that ending was changed from the book. Yeah. I uh, And Frank Darabont directed, who's a fantastic mm-hmm. director, directed the first uh, season of Walking Dead, and then that was a great season. Was he the one of the creators? Or just like a director on yeah, it? Yeah, well, I mean, it was originally a graphic novel. Right. Um. But he just—I you know. mean, like one of the creators of the show. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I think he was the creator of the show. Are there actually. coffees in those bags? Um, I don't understand about... when they deliver coffees in oh, a bag. Dude. You're asking why I have two bags? Thomas Jane, the so actor. I was. I was. Uh, that's funny. I was um, <laughs> reading something about how why he's he's not like in the acting world mm -hmm. that much. He doesn't do much. Anymore. And it's because he has a very big competitor who's almost the same. You're stupid. Is there coffee in that? Yeah. Stop it. Uh, just hold it with your feet, dude. Um, I'm not gonna hold it with there's my an feet, actor who dude. he's in competition with who's who looks similar and is a much better actor. And it's the guy who played Two Face in The Dark Knight. It's supposedly. And oh, I, uh, I know um, you. Um, what's that? Guy's and I was thinking about. It, I was like, that's not that. Oh, Wait, no, who, who has it. to compete with him? Thomas Jane. I forget what he looks like. Thomas Jane is the Punisher, not the new Punisher. Can you pull up a picture? Also of from Deep Blue Sea, also from The Mist. Pull up a picture of him right there <sighs> on that on that left things. monitor. It's so easy. You can type in Punisher. What's the guy's <laughs> fucking name? Who played? Harvey Dent. Oh shit! Harvey Dent. Dark Knight. Fucking. H Ethan H something. Oh, Aaron, Aaron Eckhart. Eckhart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. This. Eh. Yeah. For they sure. Don't look, for they, sure they, they look, do. They look similar, but like now the go face back to is the other very guy. different. So wait, here. How about this? Aaron. It's the chin, mouth, Eckhart. eyes, nose, hair, and forehead, and ears. Yeah, but not the inner ear. Right, but it's not his soul. Aaron Eckhart. Oh, dude. That's Sim fucking like, weird. It's, it's similar, but dude, like, Thomas Jane's they face... They both have the fucking worm face. Yeah. They look like they 10 years the... apart. That's what it is. No, yeah. Aaron Eckhart has squintier eyes and a pointier nose. No, they both have the... Well, yeah, actually. But dude. he's cuter. No way. Dude, this is the same man. Okay, that picture doesn't look at all the same. These are, this is the best one yet. <laughs> no. dude. Oh my god, even better. <laughs> <laughs> so many of them look... That's you guys look... I love like, Thomas Jane. Me too. It's a big bummer. Don't ask so is Jane, he done yeah. acting? Did he retire? No, he was just in a really... Or I didn't really like it. It was a um, a Netflix movie, 19... Or oh, maybe yeah. Like 18. 1922 or something? Yeah, it was like... Eh. Was, was he like a murderer in it or something? Yeah. It wasn't good? Was he no. good in it? Yeah, he's good in everything. Yeah. I, I mean, that I, I think... I think he's a really good actor. Did you see Deep Blue Sea? Yeah. He was in Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue he's remember, do you remember yeah, we watched that in... Yes, yes, exactly. We remember we watched that in Austin. He slips and falls... In every, every fucking scene, every and it, shot, it's like a and kid going like, yeah. like playing, going like they're running, ah! dude, and like the water, purpose. the water comes in through the door, and every other actor in the scene is running normally, and he's in the front, slips, Type slides in, down I the bet entire you there's thing. There's a video of that, him slipping and falling. Wish we could show this. On Thomas the Jane slipping. We can't be the only ones that are like aware of that. I bet you it's a thing. I bet you there's a video of it. Oh, the kill count. I love the kill count. Um, I love it. No, there's no compilation of Thomas really? Jane slipping. On. Well, we guys, that's an we industry we have to get into. Seriously, Thomas Jane slipping compilations. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, yeah, we should. Yeah, oh, I, uh, did we get a shot in this too? Dude, do you think? Deep Blue Sea isn't even a guilty pleasure. It's just oh, it's a pleasure. Great. It's great. I love it's creature a, movies like that. That's like a good one because it, it's self-aware that it's like way over the top. They're doing another um, shark movie. Uh, I it's another 47 meters down. Actually, 47 meters down was kind of interesting. Was it Nino more 3? suspenseful? Oh, yeah, it's suspenseful, yeah. Okay. Um, no, dude, they're, on like, they're on like eight or something. <laughs> dude, the shark NATO's literally already gone like Super Saiyan 8. It's, it's Dover. It's over. It's Why do they Dover, do that? Cliffs of Dover. And Piranha. How come you get that sandwich? Not the really good one. Sometimes I like it. It's simple. Mm hmm. Cheesy. Delicious. I had a double bacon smoked bacon. Today? Yep. You had a double bacon smoked bacon? Mm hmm Had a double bacon Wrapped smoked bacon. bacon. Back to bacon. Back to bacon. Back to making bacon. <clears throat> I, uh, who, oh my god, there was an actor, uh, I was watching, uh, last night, I don't remember who it was, but I knew he would make the most amazing villain. Who the fuck was it? What, what was I watching last night? Dude, no, this is gonna piss me off. Um, was I on YouTube? What are, I gotta go to, uh. Uh, my YouTube history. All right, I'll just read off. I'll read off my entire YouTube history, you okay. guys. Yeah, I think okay. that Fareed would make a really funny Austin Powers villain. Good neighbor, good neighbor, good That's neighbor. That's really funny, dude. Right. Holy uh, shit! When humans totally fart, <laughs> longest fart ever. <laughs> the longest fart in the world farted by Mr. Methane. The top ten funniest farts oh, dude, on Steve. You've decomposed. On live TV. <laughs> Top 10 movie fart scenes. Tosh.0 oh, all time best farts. Oh, that's what it was. Tosh.0. Oh. <laughs> no, no. Playing around. I don't have time for this. Uh, Rick and Morty, all the fart jokes. Try not to laugh. Fart jokes. I like to think that he watched all those fart videos just to set up this bit for him reading off the reading history. I like to imagine that that's just where his brain is now. No, I legitimately wanted to. There, <laughs> dude, you were in a farty mood? There's some fucking funny farts. 
first. Yeah, the best one is uh, Fatty's Fart 2. <laughs> It's yeah, people. Free, so it's a yeah, people think I'm, I'm, my movies are stupid. They're just about farting, but they're not. They're about family. And <laughs> fuck, you can't do what I do. <laughs> Tropic Thunder. Knew it. Then why'd you ask? Testing you. Oh. Yeah, I guess that's I, um, believable. Everybody knows it. I don't know who it was. I don't know who I was watching, but I'm really pissed off. Well, I'm why very, are you looking on YouTube? Was it not a show or a movie? I don't know. I don't know what it was, and I don't even know why I brought it up now because I'm pissed. An actor that would make a really good villain. Think about it, Dave. Come on, you're on Adderall. I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe it was on uh, Netflix. I don't know. I'm pissed now, though, dude. How do you guys feel being on Adderall again? Good. Amazing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I finished a fucking instrumental to a song. Yeah, I finished good. a song too. Dude. Adderall's, but the Adderall's the best. It's just because well. <laughs> <laughs> Being off of it for like a month and a half, I truly realized that I went my whole life just dealing with having ADD because my mom didn't think that it was real. Right. And so I never got like evaluated or anything for it. And I just thought that that's how my brain worked and that I had to just like figure it out. Like doing <laughs> school and shit. <laughs> what? Um but then once I met you two motherfuckers, I saw somebody who was medicated. <laughs> Gosh, how many fucking things did you order, man? That's two, man. A fucking muffin in a sandwich. Why'd they put it on two different bags? I don't know. Alright, there won't be much more noise. Dude, those, are, <laughs> those have so many crumbs, dude. Nobody gets fucking crumbs in my bed. But you? Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, did you have more? Uh, anyways, yeah. So Your I mom saw didn't it. believe that it existed? Yeah, but then I met you guys years later after going through all of my schooling. Just saw that. Shut up! That door What's up? I swear. Anyways, and so now I, I like it. Okay. That's great, James. The last time I ever tried to fucking tell you guys anything. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, finally started watching... No, I already Big watched fucking deal. two seasons of it. I can't believe... I forgot how good Better Call Saul is. It's amazing. Oh, my God. It's so... It's it's like on I think par it's the best, and in some ways better than Breaking it's Bad. It's the best spinoff series ever made. I don't think that made. it's better, no. Mm-hmm. I think it's absolutely on the same level because the writing and mm-hmm. it's Vince Gilligan. And they don't have to... It's like a, a show that doesn't have to rely on tension by killing characters? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh! Well, except for one. Probably haven't gotten there yet. Oh, you haven't seen it before? I, uh, I'm actually on season three, so he's probably... Someone's probably died. You I don't remember. You haven't seen it before? This is your first time seeing it? This is my first time seeing season three. I watched Ooh. season one and two a while ago, so I don't remember. Gotcha, gotcha. I remember, like, the issue that his brother has, and I remember where they were... They ended up. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really... Dude, the writing and the character development... And the acting in it is just like it's, it's so good. I think all those elements are are just as on par to Breaking Bad, but I think the story of Breaking Bad was grander, bigger, bigger payoff. Yeah, but they it's do different. selfishness so well. Yeah, unbelievable. It's like the, the brother. Mm, I mm, can't even mm-hmm. believe how his dialogue changes from like the both of them talk, and there's like a brief moment of, and then there's like the snap. And There's like just a snap. Like He's like, you don't think it's like more cut. I'm not gonna let you get away with this. That's the Aaron Paul line, but you know what I mean. You can't keep getting away with this, <laughs> <laughs> bitch. Oh, are you guys? Um, oh. Are you worried? I'm a little bit. I'm worried. slightly worried for the Aaron Paul uh, movie, El Camino, the Breaking Bad movie. Oh, I mean, I heard movie. whispers of it. I don't know much about it. There's so. a trailer or a teaser. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. It's just it's, it doesn't it's show much. Quick, it just shows like uh, the police is looking. You know Skinny what? Pete. Here's here's what I have to say about that. Skinny Pete's a terrible. It didn't actor. need a movie. It didn't need to be it made. It didn't need to be no. made. It, it shouldn't be made. I, I I agree. I think that unless it's really good, right? If it's fucking if it's great, really, if it's great, and, and it like is it Netflix? it at the gate. Yeah, I would have watched a prequel show about Walt's time at Gray Matter. Well, it was very brief, and it was like in college, and it wouldn't have been um, Brian Cranston, so it wouldn't have been worth it. Right, because they'd so have to go okay, back. It's okay, buddy. <sighs> Didn't think about What's that. Up, I, got, I was like, Brian Cranston, the same age. Brian Cranston, the same age at all Cranston. Brian Crayon. <laughs> Dude. Brian Cranston. Yeah, never mind. Here's the thing. Don't if, let me have if ideas. If it was great, then that's amazing, and it like actually built on the story and explored Jesse after everything like in a good way that wasn't right. just like for the sake of capitalizing on bringing but, Breaking Bad back, but... 
there's like such a chance of it being just okay. Because you know what? Breaking Bad was already so fucking like arguably one of the best shows ever made. You know, yeah. in my opinion, though. you know what I mean. So like, but you how could how yet. can a movie like compete? Watch how it. how could That's it compare? No, either. how exactly? Because Vince Gilligan does not have. He did Hancock. And, and Hancock some was other, cool. some other movies, I liked it. But I don't think movies are his forte because he doesn't get enough time to tell stories. That being said, these characters, we all know them. They all have backstories already from the TV show. So there is, like, going so forward. That. And nobody trusted Better Call Saul when it was going to come out. Everyone mm -hmm. was like, ah. They, true. They, they don't need to do that shit. And look how that turned out. One of the best TV shows ever made. That's true. So, I mean, let's so give it a chance. I trust, I trust Vince Gilligan. I think Trust he, or hope? I hope. trust him actually. Hope. It's yeah. Well, I, it's definitely hard, hope, right? but like, I know. if there's one, per, uh, here's the thing. I'm just glad they didn't get some other director, dude, or writer. James to do Cameron. This will be out in 2035. <laughs> well, and it'll be three and a half hours long. Vince Gilligan isn't directing it, right? He's yeah, just he writing. He wrote and directed it. He doesn't direct any. No. Does he direct Better Call Saul or he didn't? He's direct directed episodes of them. He has episodes. Mm -hmm. After watching the real director, but he didn't do direct Ozzy Mandius. No, that was Ryan Johnson. What's Ozzy Mandius? Rest in peace. The best Breaking Bad episode. Oh, arguably the best episode that? of television. Not arguably. Oh, Pink. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the that dude. It's it was the best episode like, of TV. Rewatching, I've rewatched just that episode like once every three or four months. You just go back to and watch it, and you're right back. It's perfect. It's, it's perfect. It's, it's perfect. That the like the story development in it. It's the culmination of everything. There are two perfect episodes exposed. on TV. That episode of Breaking Bad. And the episode of IT Crowd, where, uh, and the episode where Moss um, becomes Borat. a bartender uh, randomly, and she turns around and Moss is there at the at the bar. It's um, there's no better episode of TV. Oh man, so he directed no better now. He went from there's two of the best episodes. Now, this one's the best one in the world. <laughs> he directed five episodes of Breaking Bad and five Ryan episodes of Better Call Saul. Oh, Vince Gilligan. Vince Gilligan. Let me see which ones. He did the pilot. He did Full Measure. Oh, Full Measure is a great episode of Breaking Bad. Which one was that? It's the one where um, Jesse's going to kill the two drug dealers, but then Walt kills him instead. Hits where he them. runs him over. Run. Man. So he can direct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that was a big moment. Dude, that moment, like... Oh, and he directed Face Off. Face, oh, off? Face Off? Face Off wow. season oh, four finale? That's an amazing episode. Okay, so he's directed some of the best episodes of Breaking okay, Bad. Okay, okay. So I'm a little... Okay, I feel better now. It kind of gets me excited, Horny. How did he, that... Um, what? What? I was just in IMDb and I w did the swipe thing to go back and it just went to texts. Yeah, hey, my text. I, uh, was that moment, you know? And sorry, if this is a Breaking Bad spoiler, but if you haven't seen it, yeah, you, you didn't, you didn't. If watch you that, seen that it, pisses the best, me off. Yeah, the best show. If you yeah. haven't seen it, then you definitely have seen it in like a Watch Mojo video. Or yeah, something. if you haven't seen it, then you've definitely seen it. That uh, yeah. that <laughs> scene with Gus where half of his face is off. That's the only. Is that the only unrealistic thing that's ever happened in the show? Arguably, mm. is that the? I mean, like, because you could say that. That those rocks that he threw on the ground. Well, they did it on, Miss, on MythBusters, right? Did they actually sure do they that? Did. They yeah. confirmed I'm it. Pretty sure they did like a bunch of Breaking Bad stuff. Cool. On, uh, MythBusters. So that Gus. I, no, I don't think that that. Um, it wouldn't be that big. Okay. And if it was that big, it would have like fucked Walt up. But there, yeah. But there, obviously a little bit of exaggeration. Still, yeah, there's still I think like exaggerate. There's, there's words still words based in that. science. And yeah. That right. That one with Gus. I mean, I guess you could say you know he's in shock or something. Well, it depends on what kind of. Was it a nail bomb? I think it was a nail bomb, right? Was it? Depending on what type of bomb it was, it could have, like, because different bombs have different, like, ways that they... Radiuses. The ra yeah. yeah, so it could have, like, Explosion stripped radius. the skin off his face yeah. and not killed him instantly, but there could have been, like, what also could have been gone in his He could have been close enough because there's a It was a pipe bomb. Okay, so, but what I was going to say is, like, the radius and how close you are to it can determine how much heat touches you yeah, it and melts like, your fucking face Exactly, up. but so it wasn't... Been just close like enough for the, it to... Yeah, but like the shockwave might not have like blown him apart. Right, it could have So just it could have happened. Yeah. I mean, I don't fucking know about bombs enough. <clears throat> I don't either. What but I there's just probably like an entire true. video. They did I was like, I don't, know what, I don't know if what I just said was true either. <laughs> Jamie on Mythbusters. So we're going to put a pipe bomb on my face. And it worked. So the myth is busted. The myth is busted. Busted buster. I love Mythbusters. Yeah. They're fucking awesome. This is um I, I totally agree with Alpine Shepherd Boy. Uh, no, Vince Gilligan is much better storyteller than you. He's re he's remarking to you. He's, he's talking to you. Yeah, he's talking to me. Uh, no offense. Realism is important, but takes a backseat to visual narrative and mm -hmm. exposition. Plus, fact is he could very well have crawled halfway to the door and then stood up. We only see him exit through the door, walking out. The way it is told gives the first viewing the impression that holy shit, he's the Terminator. Then oh wait, no, he's not. Yep, it's exactly. Yeah. That's and I think exactly the difference between like. Um, the visual storytelling exactly it's like how this show has been set up up until this point Gus has been untouchable 
mm-hmm. even when they're in a situation the various characters in a situation to possibly kill him something happens to prevent it from happening like he's one step ahead of them so this showing that he walks out of the door that after the explosion happens it's like you fucking kidding me but then the reveal yeah it's a brilliant and they could have easily if they wanted to make it super realistic they could have just not had him walk out the door blows open the nurse runs by looks in the room is like ah yeah they didn't they could have done that no that was that was for fucking it was for intense like, yeah, moment, exactly. you know? It was, and I think there's absolutely room for and um, that, that payoff for exaggeration. Was, yeah, that payoff was um, earned. Yeah, that, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Like, that's the type of thing where it wasn't just done because it was cool. It was done because this character is so epically a villain, but also, like, dude, Gus is such a amazingly written character. Did you watch Hunter season two yet? No, I haven't seen any haven't of it seen yet. seen any of it. Poop, poop. I Nick will. and uh, Bailey watched it, and now there is something you need to know. And it's something I argued with Brett Hundley about. Um, right, publicly, say, right? Yeah, they're the first, and this is for everyone trying to get into Mindhunter, the first season is a little rough. Dad, um, damn it, that's my fucking pet like, peeve. Well, there's like five to seven <sighs> episodes in a row that deal with really weird dialogue between characters and their relationships, and it's they don't flesh that out until the towards the end of the season, and then season two is amazing, hmm. but... Once you get into the parts where they really start getting into the job and they learn, you know, their place and they're learning their place uh, in behavioral science for the FBI and they interview all these killers like Ed Kemper. Yeah. Dude, that it's it's on par with Zodiac I've and, seen, huh? and all David Fincher movies. Yeah, that wow. are really I've good. seen like I saw this video and it was like um, talking about the real serial killers that are in Mindhunter. Mm-hmm. And so it was like showing like the difference in different scenes but it wasn't like playing the whole scenes it was just like talking about like here's a little example of this one in the show and then like the real person they talked about like the real one and shit you see the Ed Kemper guy yeah oh Oh. the the actor looks amazing and he's so good I love it when small characters in a show or a movie are just such great actors that guy deserves an Emmy for his like supporting characters and supporting actors that are great feel make the movie or the show feel so full mm-hmm. like it's not just the leading people that are yeah. like carrying it it's like you have the small character that's only in it for one scene it's like five minutes but they bring it you right. know what i mean and it's just yeah, what i liked about the actor that played ed kemper um yeah. is he i don't think i like i really don't, I don't feel think like he, did he it. no i really <laughs> i really don't feel like he replicated the personality of ed kemper but he channeled it and then he kind of made it his own and then it was consistent with how he chose to play the character but was very similar to ed kemper. yeah you like I mean? he's yeah. not just like it was completely nice. copying the interview they didn't, like yeah, like they didn't who's, who's the exact a, lines right but. and who who's the actor i fucking forget his dumbass name um who played and did a great job of it but he played the oh, other murderer. Yep. But uh, he just, just like, he studied him and tried Ted to Bundy. be him. Ted oh, Bundy. Zach Zach Efron. Efron. And yeah, that yeah. was fun, but I respect the Ed Kemper version mm-hmm. of him better because he just like, he made it a little bit his own yeah. and he did a fucking I think the reason that you respect it more is because of the story that yeah. they told. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not like, like, if, like they're, they're telling it, they're telling that story of like the early days in the FBI and the uh, behavioral, anal- what is it? Behavioral I something think unit? Behavioral science. BAU, BAU, right? Is like that department of the FBI. Yeah. It's the BAU because that's what's mm-hmm. in Criminal Minds. Um, the early days of them, like, they're telling that story how it should be told, unlike the Ted Bundy movie that told that story in a weird way. That I didn't like. You're yeah, right. Because You're right. the whole thing so about biased. that Ted Bundy movie is they were they didn't show any of the killings because they didn't want to glorify the crimes, right. but they glorified him as a person because because they didn't Which show the, you the killing. Little, With you the know? Ted Bundy movie, they basically just showed us everything we would already have seen if we were watching on TV. Yeah. It's so annoying. Yeah, but exactly. I do I do think Zac Efron did a good job. Yeah, Even no, like, as, as, as becoming Ted Bundy, absolutely, mm-hmm. like verbatim studying him, I think know, he's being him, I think he did Zac great. Efron, I agree. When I heard that awesome. it was going to be a story told from uh, his wife's perspective, wife's perspective I, was I was like, like yeah, oh, that's fucking that's cool. That's really cool. And then he was also cool in it. Yeah, he was Zac Efron still, mm-hmm. and yeah. they made him Zac Efron. Yeah, like, that's well, what he was, was shitty yeah, about. It, it should have been an actor that nobody knew of. I don't think he was fully Zac you Efron could like in. he has been in other movies, but he was definitely there was a good amount of Zac Efron in there. You every time you could do it, you could feel the pride in Zac Efron mm-hmm. for being, being Ted hot. Bundy. Yeah, being hot, but I'm Ted Bundy. I'm, I'm an actor, like, <laughs> and that that just like. I'm sitting in the forefront. I'm secretly evil. <laughs> I was in High School Musical. Uh, I'm secretly evil. And he goes, boys, another sponsor abs. boys. Another sponsor boys. Raycon. Thank you, again, thank you so much to Raycon for sponsoring the podcast. We Weren't love you. Weren't you just you. sick? No, I'm not sick anymore. Thank you, Raycon. Much appreciated, my dudes. Hey, everybody. Did you know it's 2019? Yeah. Seriously? Everyone needs a pair of wireless earbuds. It's true. 
But before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon. Raycon. Philip DeFranco friend. uses Raycon. Really? Yeah, I, I heard um, him do a, a thing on this, and he was saying that he wears it and that his um, editor, James, you know James. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's already been wearing them before they got sponsored. Interesting. Very yeah. cool. Which is kind of bad for Raycon because James is a bit of a loser. Right. Bad mm. face to the brand. Yeah. Raycon earbuds started about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and they sound just as amazing. The company was actually co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Cardi B, Cardi B, was and founded by even her? Melissa Etheridge are already obsessed. Raycon's wireless earbuds have totally changed the game for me. They're so comfortable and so easy to take anywhere. Mm. Unlike some of your other wireless options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet with no dangling wires or stems. And of course, they don't just look great. You know, I actually had um, wireless earbuds that were plant-based and they had a bunch of stems on mm. them. Uh, and musical, they sound great too. Musical stems. What'd you just say? What's up? No, but Raycon earbuds have uh, the bass and the treble. Girl, it's actually, it's, uh, it's well balanced. It's banging. Mm -hmm. It is banging. It is banging. It's like, I'll, I'll use other, uh, I, well, I guess I when I'll call, I'll use like Bluetooth shit. Yeah, they're, like, they're just ahead of the game. Especially with... in the airport, like I'll get yeah. some fucking uh, Bluetooth things that are like a hundred bucks at the airport. Yeah. That's yeah. so fucking annoying. Oh my but they're God. really like, dude, $50 headphones. Every That's time so I go to like the- They're like $20 yeah. fucking- Dude, I go to the airport every time I, I forget, I have to bring the little dongle that yeah. has like the- The connector. The thing, connector yeah. for regular headphones to iPhone. It's $60. Every time and I've like, bought four, and dude. I don't want to wear headphones in the airport because I don't want to look like a loser. I've done it before, so I'll, I'll use Raycon instead. And yeah, I'll, well, they're it'll great. It'll be discreet. Yeah, and then on the plane, you can like put your head to the side and sleep. And yes, it's not like blocked. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's and then if I use uh, noise like canceling shit, ones, yeah. it'll like suck on my ear, and, <laughs> and then I'll wake up and blood. This and is you'll just take, blood. You'll take it yeah. out to go to the bathroom, and it's like, <laughs> it's playing so loud. Uh, so but Raycon now with Raycon, offers their wireless earbuds for everyone in a range of fun colors and at an unbeatable price. Go to buyraycon.com slash pine to get a 15% off your order. That's a 15% off. That's crazy. That's buyraycon.com slash pine for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. If you've been eyeing a pair, now is the time to get an amazing deal. Mm. One more time, buyraycon.com slash pine. pine. <laughs> That's crazy. Beautiful. Thank you, Raycon. Thank, thank you, Raycon, Raycon. you fucking legends, dude. And thank you, Ray J. Yeah, you fucking legends, Mike. Ray J, oh, I've seen you cock. Ray J, I've seen you cock. <laughs> Dude, that's, Ray the, J. that's the slogan. Ray, Ray J. J, you've seen us cock. <laughs> it's just Ray J. Ray J, you see my dick, right? Buy my headphones. <laughs> but oh. in all honesty, they're great headphones. You guys continue. I want to make another cup of Joe. So um, I want to talk about the Bob Lazar documentary. Ah. Come on, I just watched it, dude. I think. I don't want to talk about that shit. That guy interviewer is so bad. I think that he is absolutely telling the truth. A hundred percent. So too. A hundred so, and it's no of part only, of me feels that he's at all lying or, or the, exaggerating at all. Mm -hmm. He is the only like outspoken guy like that who I believe. The rest I, of them always have like a part of the story where I'm like, eh. or it's bullshit. Yeah, that I was mean, the, the most poorly made documentary no, I've ever it, seen it, in my well, life. Dude, the no. narrator. Oh my the inter, god. The interviewer, the documentarian, the guy who tired. did it. And he swears. <laughs> and like, he's so bad. Everybody fucking loves to live their life. But do you do it one step at a time? Everybody or fucking do you do loves it? Lucky Charms. He's <laughs> 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 just eating dude. while he's recording. Sure, you just got. It's my go. show, dude. That took like me out so, of it, it so much. It was so much. weird, like how it began with like these weird shots of like his. I was phone like, just get to fucking stuff. Bob Lazar. I just want to know what he has to say, and then the images and shit to. No, because I want to be. I want to be fucking famous, dude. The amount of times he swore that was so unnecessary, and it was just. I was like, what is this for? Fucking fifteen-year-old kids. You ever been dancing in the fucking streets? It's for rednecks. That documentary is for rednecks. But dude, watching it, Bob Disagree Lazar himself. With me. I'm not wrong. He I don't have time for this. Is absolutely telling his truth. His truth, yes. What, what there was a dude what, that what was able to walk onto Area 51. He was he had a plan to I think it was walk across the country and there was a or in a straight was line. Was this recent? No, nah, this is a while ago. Um and he asked permission from the military base at Area 51 if he could, you know, walk by because that's his, that's his path. And they said no. He just did it anyway and was able to walk onto their base and go past. Mm. It's, it's absolutely true. And the only response from the military at the time was uh, that they were disappointed in him. Well, we were like we were pretty gotten, disappointed. I feel in like here. he would have gotten arrested. No, no, no. So, but he real quick, talk, he, they didn't they didn't catch him before that. What do you how, how do you walking. feel, Steve, about Bob Lazar? Do you believe any of it? Um. 
I believe he's telling his truth. So do you believe that, believe that, that he he's... works there, that they wiped his records, and he saw and worked on alien crafts, and, you know? No. Really? So yes. he, you think he was lying about that? I think if Area 51 found crafts, spacecrafts from aliens, where we aren't able to see in our local celestial area that there are there is any form of life, that the aliens wouldn't be dumb enough to get caught. I don't know if that's necessarily and, and, true. And if one alien is caught here, I'm sure more would make themselves known besides just our military base. I don't think our military base is the one place that there would be aliens. Maybe. I don't know. Well, I mean, we don't know where they got it. You know, they, c they could have got it anywhere and brought it to Area 51, for all we know. They'd have to go fucking far. They'd have to figure out a, a, how to use a vehicle that goes faster than light speed. No, but or I mean, like, light speed at least. If, if a spaceship crashed anywhere on the Earth or something and, like... It doesn't mean it just landed in Area 51 and they grabbed it. Well, people it. are thinking... I mean, this has been a theory. This has been a theory for a while, but, like, you know, they're, they're like, oh, if you go through a uh, supermassive black hole, you'd be able to just teleport to the other side of the universe. There's a... Um, what's it called at the center of a black hole? A... Event horizon? No, that's that's the area where you can't get out. A singularity? Singularity. That you would just become part atoms. of that singularity. And you would just... You're just... Part, yeah, you're like all oh, your atoms, but it's not going to put you somewhere else. You're demolecularized into yeah. like nothingness, yeah. so the smallest particles. But my thing is that, so I don't think they'd be able to travel that far. In that um, and I don't think we ever no, would. I think that there's absolutely uh -huh. um, life out there, yep. and that it, like one of the most compelling things I heard about aliens and like them observing Earth was that. Um, they've been observing us for a long time and it wasn't until the 40s when we used when we detonated an atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki that they saw that as a very unnatural thing to do because it is like you're splitting an atom you're doing something that you shouldn't do mm -hmm. and so they saw that as like a, a no-no and that's why they came closer to observe and see like what the fuck we're doing and then um, cause it was like 47 or something when the Roswell thing happened. So it wasn't too long after. Yeah, but I guess to believe that you'd need to believe that there are things you shouldn't do, you know? Yeah. Like I do. I mean, you have that innate sense like, oh, I shouldn't murder somebody, but science, I don't know. I feel like, no, I think there's a lot of science that you it, have to do. You not, you, I guess you sh shouldn't necessarily do it, but there's no, I don't think there's some universal law that's like, this is unnatural. It's I just all well, part of it. I think. Well, no, no. It's no, when you're, it's when you're, know. it's when you're unsettling the natural like flow of like reality you're taking something like an atom and you're manually splitting it it's still reality no but that's doing something like you're taking a sub a if sub it wasn't reality it, it doesn't happen physically possible it doesn't happen naturally I, you, know, you know what it feels like it's like naturally in a so, different like it's like breaking the fourth wall of reality be, dude there's got to be you know some I mean? thing in the universe that splits an atom naturally well what how, what do no. you think about the synthetic element 115 don't even know what that is so is that a that's they say that a, they say in Area Fifty One that they created an element. No, they element created. 15. They try to synthesize it from the element that was using the the drive on that craft. So they tried to synth. Uh, synth well, that, that's the thing. So th there's two stories behind it. One of them is that they created it. They synthetically created yeah, element one fifteen. <laughs> and then too pissed. the uh, the other story, which Bob Lazar believes, is that it's not from our world. You cannot create it out of the, yeah. th the things we have. Everything that we know, that every scientist, that science as a whole, that it that came from knows, something else. Yeah. Um, nothing that we have or have created or are working on or theorized can make this it also didn't make sense to me and obviously maybe this does make sense in in like the science world but the way bob lazar explained how it's synthetically created it was like it, it was, was like this printing cylinder it. yeah it was a cylinder of of layers of of elements or something like that it was cut and then it just you know at a certain point of it being cut into these like triangles it becomes was, element 115 it just becomes an element that defies gravity like that does not make sense to me unless right. it's some sort of like it's I don't like know, magnetic it. because of the elements or whatever Maybe, the fuck. Know, yeah. But it doesn't make sense to me that you can create an element with such extraordinarily like powers, mind blowing fucking gravity defying abilities from splitting layers of elements well, or whatever. Like it, I think um, that is like unworldly. Like that doesn't make sense. Yeah, to me. it doesn't make sense to me either. But it's such like, but I mean, think about like the physics of the universe. We only know. Oh, it's. You know what doesn't what make sense know. to me, but I believe. Huh. Um, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. When if a person had a suit that allowed them to go into a black hole, they go into a black hole from a space station that's past the event horizon, so they're not going to get sucked in, and they're still able to see the guy going into the black hole. At a certain point, he's going to stop moving 
but if from his perspective the ship he's still moving at a at a constant rate towards or i guess increasing rate towards the black hole and that would mean that technically reality is relative I because agree. Because his reality is different. Well, well I think because time and space, like with Einstein's theory of technology, like they expand a little bit on Baldur's Gate. Relative. <laughs> relative. Sorry, also, rel- the spaceship would be red How? and he would be, or from, they would see him becoming be- more red and then he would see them being more blue, because, which is weird. Because time and space, like Einstein believes it's like, it's on like a 3D plane, right? And like, how gravity works is if you, if you have a ball here on a bed and then you put another ball there, you know, it starts to like, do you know what I mean? Do, yeah. like, well, that's correct. Have you yeah, seen that? You push it down. Yeah, yeah. That it's not just but, um, all going towards the center oh, yeah, of the it's, Earth. It's, it's like a gravity blanket. Is its own, it's like a blanket. Right. It's its mm-hmm. own thing. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's why that explains the relativity of, if, of something like that happening. Because even, like, how do they explain with black holes where, like, if you fold a piece of paper? Yeah. Like, you well, know what I mean? So, like, it, that's not a, it is rel- yeah, relative. Yeah, that's like a, a wormhole. A wormhole, yeah, yeah, but I mean, that's why it, it's it absolutely positive that it's all relative. You know? Yeah, ac- well, I mean, it's I don't like know that. What we're on right now. To well, be the honest. whole thing about the idea of space, like, is able to bend and like that. Oh, okay. You so know, have you guys heard about that study that was done? And it was basically, um, it's with the two slits, and they put the electrons through it, and to like see how the electrons reacted um would like travel through something with two like direct slits if they would go through those slits or not and so they did it and then on the back end of it to see like where they land they observed that it looked like the electrons just went right through the thing Mm. like didn't go through through the the slits like they just went right through the barrier and then they were like oh what that is not our hypothesis like that's not what we thought was going to happen so they set up another sort of observation device to like look at them, them go right through the slit and when they did that the electrons went through the slit and made a different pattern why did mm. they go through the slit this time Be- so the only thing that they were able to like theorize was that them observing the electrons doing it changed the way the electrons moved and that they're sentient is what you're saying not that That's they're crazy. sentient but <laughs> just that like observation it's the bobby b bot What's that? Oh, never mind. Does that, nec- no, no, does no, no. that mean that they, that they have their own... Observation like changes reality. Like how you were saying that wow. reality is um, subjective? Is that yeah. what you said? Yeah. No, uh, reality relative. is relative. Yeah. yeah. That reality is relative. That s- witnessing this happen or observing it um, like changes the outcome. Why would it do that? I don't know. Mm. But I was like, I, w- I forget what video it was. It might have been like a real. That life doesn't make sense to me. Just no, them but watching it. No, I know. That's like the whole thing about it is that like, they thought that it was going like to go through the slits. When my dogs won't go to the bathroom outside, and I have to sit there and watch them. And then it changes reality. But it was just saying, do. and that's like one of the uh, supports. And I don't, I don't <gasps> agree with this. I think it's interesting for like a movie, like The Matrix. But like the whole idea of like a yeah, simulation. Yeah, that's like for a life sequel. You ever seen Life? Oh Jake yeah, Gyllenhaal? with Jake Gyllenhaal. I actually didn't mind that movie. I, don't I, know I didn't mind it. it. Well, it I like well, Ryan Reynolds in that too, right? Yeah, I like them both. So what what like movie was movie. that? It's when they're in uh, life. space and they're on like a ship and they find it's this like alien. Oh but yeah, with a, but worse microorganism. Yeah. Wait, is that like really shitty CGI? No, it's great. Really? It's great CGI. The monster huh. looks cool. You know what has I've seen really it. shitty CGI and a lot uh, of movies. It doesn't hold up, but I still enjoy it immensely. Ben Helsing, Event Horizon. Dude. I don't know if I've seen Event Horizon. I oh my love god! I love Van it's Helsing. Just, dude, and if I watched that when it came out, if I was that young, and I because I heard stories of people watching that when they were young, oh my god! And when CGI hasn't like been built up, that movie would have given me so much trauma. That, that's a great really? like, cosmic horror. Wow! It's it's, it's such a Lovecrafty and amazing movie. I, I love, love the way Lovecraft. The, I love like I want to see it. I love and H.R. Geiger too. Who yep. like all the alien, alien designs yeah. and stuff like that? Did he design some of the stuff in that movie? <laughs> no, not in Event Oh, Horizon. just in general, you, yeah. But like that style of like, it's almost like gothic spaceship, yeah. and it's like really like it's kind of like biological yeah, in a way, that, and um, it's like uh, it's the kind of movie that uh, Crimson Peak was a gothic romance. Huh. Is that what it is? I think that's a gothic romance. I'm I haven't not, seen. I'm not thinking Peak. of gothic romance, but like yeah, you're go- a gothic space horror. It's like thing. yeah, like gothic space, but not in a super like intense way. It's still like. Like, the ship in Event Horizon is very similar like, the ship in Prometheus mm-hmm. that they find on the planet and stuff, where it's, like, it looks advanced, but it also looks kind of, like, ancient in a way and, like, kind cool. of, like, biological. And, like, it doesn't look like it should look like that f- to operate, but it's just, like... There were scenes they had to cut out uh, to make it not NC-17, mm-hmm. 
And yeah. also, yeah, no, I actually just watched a movie about on Good Bad Flicks. You know Good Bad Flicks? Mm -hmm. So watch uh, their video about Event Horizon. It's really interesting um, because, like, there's a lot of, like, religious um, imagery Neil, and stuff. Sam Neill, Sam Neill, yeah. Sp Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> Jurassic Park, the main I'm guy in Jurassic Park. I'm loving him. Um, loving him. Sam Neill, Jurassic so Park. So there's a lot Dr. of... Uh, Alan Grant. Dr. Helen Grant. You know <laughs> Remember the raptor? Yes, yeah, Park yeah, yeah, he's the, the guy who... The main guy in Jurassic yeah. Park, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Remember in Jurassic Park 3, the raptor? Alan. Alan. <laughs> Dude, that's... I... That's a lot of so people funny. shit on Jurassic Park three. I think I that was the it. last no, Jurassic real Jurassic Park. Park oh yeah, yeah. yeah. no, Fuck I like yeah. that movie. It's it's not as good as it the felt first like two. A Jurassic Park, but movie. it was entertaining. That being said, it has the weakest third act. Mm -hmm. The lake or whatever with the Spinosaurus. Mm -hmm. He could have done something cooler. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Event Horizon. There's a lot of like religious imagery in it. That's really cool. Like they base the design off the Event Horizon ship off of the Notre Dame Cathedral. Cool. And so because it has like you know like in a big cathedral, there's the long aisle way between the pews that goes to the mm. altar so that's like the, the ship one where he, oh and dude when he when uh what's his name uh matrix guy lawrence fishburne who has a daughter who's a porn star mm -hmm. mia or diamond mia, 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 mia <laughs> diamond uh diamond skin diamond that's neil her, diamond that's phillips her, that's her skill diamond shirt. no that's actually her skin porn diamond shirt. yeah um why are you he's, so shiny skin diamond where skin he's diamond. walking uh and sam neil's walking behind him and he's like what are you gonna do and he's like uh, we're going to get very far from this ship, and we're going to nuke it until it is vaporized, and there is nothing left. Mm -hmm. Fuck this ship. Yep. And then it's he's, so real. And he's like, "Fuck this ship." Whoop whoop. And then, <laughs> <laughs> fuck this ship. Whoop whoop. This nah, and he, he has a button, dude, dude, he has a front flip on a barbed wire. When he's walking through the hallway, and he's like, <gasps> "This goes out to all the jugglers, jugglers. Uh, hope you like it." And don't try this. This is home. my friend Paul. And don't try this home. This is my friend Paul. I'm going to jump on barbed wire. Whoop whoop. whoop. Fuck, fuck this, this ship. ship. Whoop. Do you know what we're talking about? No. Oh my god, he hasn't seen Superhuman! I haven't sent you a Superhuman TV show? No. Oh my god! Dude! Oh, you're about to... Dude, dude just text me that so, right now. And no, I'll we're going to watch it right now. Oh, dude, we're going to watch it right now. This was, this was 40 I'll minutes of right the now. last podcast. We talked about this so it's much. It's the funniest well, and we're not gonna best talk about it again. I'll Twitter watch it account. We can yeah, talk about it. You can just watch it after. You can watch it after. You can watch it after. It's the best Twitter account I've ever seen in my entire life. And I showed Steve and I showed Nick. And then we're going to have a great time. And we're going to have a great fucking time. I wish... Whoop, whoop. I wish they would... They would make... A, that is one movie that I would totally watch a uh, reboot? reboot. Oh yeah, of, or like what? Of Event Horizon. You know who I think should do a movie like that though? Um, like, oh, Dune guy. Uh, I would totally watch a Event Horizon by. Um, oh, Denny. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah! But no, that's not what I was gonna say. Who are you gonna say? Um, Ryan Johnson. No, someone like a really good horror director. Like, don't fucking say James Wan. I was gonna say Jack Wong. No. Were you gonna say James Wan? No. Thank you. Then I don't want like I like his the movies have become trash, dude. Yeah, they've just become like there's just too much of the whole what like insidious it's conjuring the same thing over and over universe. Again. Conjuring horror. Conjuring. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I like those. Annabelle. I like those when I was in high school. I fucking love them. I think them. the first dude, conjuring. conjuring still holds up. Oh, I think yeah, the yeah. first conjuring is great. It's one of the best horror movies of the last twenty years. Yep. But was the rest Insidious of them, good too. Insidious yeah, is yeah right, I think the first Insidious is really good. Yeah, yeah. Both of the first Insidious and first Conjuring. I really like The Nun um, One of the worst oh, movies I've oh ever seen Oh my god It's terrible It's just, it's anyway, just anyway, I hate it when What director, what director? Oh, Ari fuck. Aster Yes Oh no Because he would make it weird And it's supposed to be weird But not that weird Like pretentious weird Who knows I mean We're going to make it different Ari, Actually you know mm. I think Ari Aster I think I tweeted this Like a few months ago Ari Aster Should make A Silent Hill reboot Yeah That's a movie Because that I would love to see A Silent Hill Not made like a Silent Hill movie and I think he would do the that. The first Silent Hill movie is so good. Yeah. That I movie, love that movie. I remember watching that in the basement of my friend's house and I fell asleep and I woke up right when Pyramid Head ripped, ripped this girl's the skin, skin off. off and I was fucking traumatized. That was horrible, yeah. dude. No, that, I think that I truly, loved horror shit when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Me no. too. I, can't I loved it, but I mean, oh, I was like maybe just because he like, just because he woke up no, and like was still half asleep. Yeah. What do you mean? Tremors. The movie Tremors. Oh, okay. I've never seen it. Anyway, sir. Um, I think the first Silent Hill movie is one of, if not the best, video game to film who adaptation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Was it dude. the same guy who did um, Resident Evil? No. Who did Silent Hill? What about Tomb Raider? Or was that first? No, Tomb Raider's not good. <laughs> I like the, I like Tomb Raider. It's fun, but it's not a good movie. I think Silent Hill is a better movie. Oh, and yeah. As far yeah. as like an adaptation oh, that's, that's true to the source material, but Who's takes. Christoph, Christoph Gans. He's the director who did it. Yeah, I know that. Anyway. Christoph Gans. I think he did a great job because it looks like Silent Hill. It feels like Silent Hill. Yeah. Has the same characters, but the story's a little bit different, but it's still 
true to the like the source material. Oh, we did 2014 Beauty and the Beast. That was his only movie after Silent Hill. How about huh, that? I don't know. In eight years, he didn't direct a movie. Is he a writer or a producer or something? Huh. What's Corto Maltese? At the dawn of the 20th century, Corto Maltese is... Boring. Boring. Oh, did you... I love the first when is, movie. Did we already miss the screening of it, it too? Yeah, probably. I think so. I think Damn like it. The day after I Dude, I was just thinking it. of that. Yeah, you texted me about it, and then you didn't send us any tickets. Zaragoza went to like a I, red carpet uh, event, and I, I was like, hell yeah. The kid from Stranger Things was there, and... Barry, the actor who plays Barry, what's his name? Oh, you watched oh, it? You no, watched no, it too? No, no, no. no, no. I, but Zaragoza went there and he posted on Instagram and he was there with the actor who plays Barry. Yeah, he's friends with them. That's right? so fucking Wait, cool. Wait, do you mean the, the kid who's also in Stranger Things? Him and the actor who played Barry. Oh, fucking. Yeah, he was there. I was like, what the fuck? That blew my mind. That guy's a genius. And they're like, I don't know, man. Yeah, he's a fucking genius. Absolutely. He was in um, um, Pineapple Express too. I love the intro oh, yeah. scene where he's Stranger smoking. Sh- oh, wait, that's super bad. Where he's like, uh, do a. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's pretty shit. It's pretty, pretty shit. Put this on the pavement. <laughs> but in the beginning of Pineapple Express, he's the guy in from the yeah, old smoking time. smoking a blunt. You know. Yeah, Bill Hader. <laughs> yeah, Bill Hader's amazing. <laughs> I forgot his name too. For we do. Really? Yeah. I always forget Bill Hader's name, even though I. Yeah, love, I'll never I remember Bill Hader's name so ever. Good. Most forgettable name he's I've ever. He's just heard like of. one of the best, like comedians and character. He's fucking like, he could just, like, dude. Snap. But I still Barry? haven't watched Barry, man. I need to watch dude, Barry. Dude, watch Barry. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I'll tell you one thing. I'll never wear hater blockers. Hater blockers. Nice. Dude, uh, Barry was nominated for 16 awards. Damn Seriously? Shit. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. It's so good, dude. It's it's. I know it's totally different, but it reminded me of how I felt. I didn't how, say Siri. When I was watching Breaking Bad, I was like, oh my God, like this is the best show. No other show Babe. in the past. In my life has been this like groundbreaking. Watching Barry was like, cool. This is definitely like way better than most shit. Yeah. You know? It was like a Tarantino movie. A yeah. Little bit, but yeah. Every episode. You feel like, wow, this is different and Still so good. Still hasn't watched Barry. That's a show you would love. Yes, dude. You should actually watch that before Mindhunter. Yes. Okay. Barry's so good. Yeah. Oh, actually, how about this? Finish the first two seasons of Barry before the new season comes out, and then we'll watch the new episodes together. And we don't have to be at the same place to watch them. But we but, could if we wanted to. But we could if we wanted to. But then we can talk about it as the new episodes come out. We should have, like, a Friday right. Barry day. And we'll all fucking hang yeah. out. We can even potentially do it at my new place. Dude, Kim's living Unless it up now. Are you able to say where you live? Sam Joe doesn't want me to, but I said event like it's gonna happen. I said I live in the event horizon. You live in the event horizon <laughs> in the ship, dude. Um, also, uh, to trail back to uh, event horizon, um, I wasn't a huge fan of, and I hope they if they ever reboot it, they don't make this the thing that the ship becomes haunted, because that's not that cool to me. The idea of the ship bringing back something don't spoil anything because I want to watch cool. it Horizon but the ship itself uh, where they're like talking about the ship knows all it's seen things it's like it's a ship dude fuck that's off that's kind of lame I don't give a shit about like that cover your ears real quick. I think the idea that it goes to hell and comes that's back cool. is super cool it's doom it's very mm-hmm. doom it's very like very oh, gothic inspired doom no because doom came out first right the, well, the game yeah the first doom came out okay you're good, you're good Kip. <laughs> cool. the first doom I think came out like in the 90s didn't it late doom. 90s I'm gonna look up. Dude, people were, were like obsessed with that game when it first came out. Doom. Did you guys play the new one, or like was it a reboot? No, or? I don't. I mean, definitely a reboot. Um, or was it like a I sequel? imagine. It was yeah, a I reboot. played. I played the shit out of was the new one. Did you? It's Fun? not. It's not my favorite kind of Doom. I like Doom Three, where it's scary. Is oh, this yeah. is the new one more like just like a shoot 'em up? Kinda? Yes, but it is the best shoot 'em up. If you're oh. looking for just Super, like, like splattering gore. Oh shit. yeah, and the guns really? are so fucking cool. And I played it, play it 4K on this monitor. It's fun. It's, you know what? It's really fun. Not a popular opinion. Um, Duke no Nukem, story. Duke Nukem Forever is amazing. Is amazing. Is I beat it twice. Never played any of it's Duke amazing. Games. That movie. You both that would game, love it. I don't want to play it. There's the just, gameplay, dude. Much. The gameplay is so fucking fun. It took what 10, 15 years to come out, and then it it's, got the worst reviews of all time. I don't know how. It's amazing. The story's funny. The 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 actual gameplay and the different things that you do are so fun. So fucking fun. It's phenomenally fun like I would play it again you know what movie you should play is an actual guilty pleasure that I love and I will watch over and over again the Doom movie with Dwayne yeah. the Rock Johnson yeah. it's fun I don't remember and, it and uh, Carl Urban but. yeah that is a good movie in the first person scene dude when I was a that kid that scene's epic dude oh my god I remember the first time that I saw that movie I was just like flipping through channels and it was on like just TNT bag, or dude. something put it in the bag put the coffee in the bag no, dude don't shake it you're man. gonna end up spilling it on the bed don't spill it on the bed on purpose Okay, I do it. Know. I just don't know what to do. Continue. 
Um, I was like flipping through channels late at night and I was on like TNT or something the first time I saw it and it, I turned the channel on right when that first person scene started and I was like this is fucking sick and yes. then it came on again like another night and I watched it and I was like mm. there's a movie I <laughs> that is only first person that I really want to enjoy but it gives me a headache and it gives oh, me hard, makes hard me hard yeah hard. it makes me sick it. every time I watch oh, it oh the one that's all yeah. first person my brother loves that movie it's on it's, Netflix right I can tell that it's so fucking cool I didn't I think just, it was that cool. I actually thought, huh, I like the concept, but uh, yeah, you like it's dizzy, it's yeah, nauseating, it's just yeah. too shaky. But it is cool. He's like running and there's action, shooting guns and <laughs> shit. Like, you know what yeah. movie it's I neat. fucking loved from back in the day? Crank. Yeah, yeah dude, yeah, Crank dude. was Where he dope. Had sex with him on the street. Yeah. yeah, dude. Because he's just like he that got me so fucking horny. That's just such a, dude, like that, part. dude. Yes, <laughs> dude. I was so horny watching dude. that shit, man. And Amy's was smart. Like, yeah. Oh, whoa, they're fucking on the <laughs> dude on the fucking. Oh, whoa. <laughs> well, they're fucking on the the racetrack or some shit. Dude, that's the epitome. I was like, fuck. Does he jump off the roof or something? To yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that part on the is the epitome of the. Oh fuck! Yes, it is in the bed. <laughs> Kim and I were talking when we hung out one day. We were like uh, making fun of you doing that and how you really like doing that. Because I think it, you because you think it's real when you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's dude. So you funny. actually bust a nut every time you do it. Every single time. <laughs> I need you're to bust a nut, man. You're like, guys, I think this is so funny. Check this out. Oh, 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 oh. and then you actually jizz. <laughs> man, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, look, man. Short short so you can myself. easily see. So it just like kind of drips <laughs> down. <laughs> look, man. I'm just it, it's, yo. If I need to bust a nut. And you guys are around. Oh. I'm not gonna leave and dude, jerk off. Dude, he's gonna bust the nut in front of his son. Oh, dude, we've been going for 66 minutes. Wow, good for us. We just had fun. You want to keep going? Yeah. Nah. Fuck it. No. no, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, um, yeah. I mean, I don't really have anything else to talk about yeah. now that Does I've anything seen anything funny happen. <laughs> uh, Does anything funny happen to anybody lately? Well, I went out to the bar with Nick and Bailey last night because Bailey landed. Is that Amazon why you called show. me? Um, oh, she actually got it. Yeah, we called you twice. I know. Amazing. Yeah, we figured. Um. But I'm trying to think of anything interesting happened. Uh, not really. Yeah. Just uh, had some Bloody Marys and then went back and uh, got an order canceled um, from food. And that was it. I went to Hawaii last month. Oh, last yeah. Week. It's really fun. Love you don't it. look that tan. Yeah, because I got burnt. Right. And, it and then off. Um, couldn't, like, enjoy the sun without a bunch of sunscreen and shit. I got one of those like rash guard shirts, you know, like the wetsuit shirts. Right. So that you're not just like sun. Um but it's tanner for sure. But then I'm like, Ew, nice. Can I peel some? Yeah. Oh okay. fuck. Dude, I was the worst burnt I've ever had when I was at Licking the Beach. Did I show you what did I see you since then or or no? I don't know, did I show you my sunburn when we went out? Hot, yeah. That was near the end of it. Now it's like fine, but it still hurts a little. But my whole back was yeah. peeling. Whole back yeah, like I worst got, sunburn I I've ever had in my life. Too. No, you didn't, dude. From one ray of light coming in. I'm still sunburned from when we went to look at that fire. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. From the fire? Yeah. We um. That that fire actually started from the sun. We need wow. to find like an actual set, you know, like for this. We need I to, know. Can we just set up in your fucking shed? My shed? Yeah. Actually. My garage. Your garage. Sure. Yeah. Why don't we set up in your garage next time? I'll bring all the shit over and we just keep the microphones there and shit. Yeah. Okay. Could we record? So could easier. we record it on a laptop? Yeah. Then I have a laptop. Bring the laptop. And the, the equipment stays there. Easily. The laptop just goes over to Easily. record. The lights are already there. Yeah, and we can just keep the. Dude, we could yeah. buy we could buy like a a little thing and then have, have a backdrop. Do you have a lock for your shed that you roll up? Um, yeah, the garage door, like the thing that goes up, is locked. We could buy like oh, make it print an SP7 the, backdrop. The shed. What shed are you talking about? I guess it's not a shed, but like my garage. Is with that the laundry your room? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, the door in the back is that locked? We could do laundry yeah, during lock. the cool. podcast. Yeah, what? sure. That actually, yeah. dude, that's such a cool shot. Like, uh, opening up the garage, and then that's like the... Oh, like where the background is the street? Yeah. Yeah. No. That's rad. No, no, no. He means for like... It's like, opening the garage, and that's the intro. And then we're in there, like and it's all set up and lit nicely. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's Let's great. do that next that's week. Let's do that next week, yeah. guys. That won't happen. Okay. Guys, right. This I'm has been episode a... 104, baby. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see if we Thank can you do to another. Our sponsors, HoneyBook and Raycon. Thanks, HoneyBook. Thanks, Loving Raycon. It. Loving we it. love you guys. Loving it. Love Loving guys. it. Make sure to read the Old Testament of How to Raise a Sheep. It will come out on Netflix next season. And you got to show James Superhuman. Yeah. Guys, I'm going to be putting out a fucking song. Probably it'll go up next week. I'm going to put it on Spotify and iTunes. It'll be my first official song on Spotify and you iTunes. You need help shooting a music video. Um, you got me, baby. 
Boom. I want to shoot a music video for it. I think it'd be fun. Um, yeah. So look forward to that. I'm excited about it. Kib thinks it's my best thing I've ever made so far. Which isn't saying much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a great, oh, yeah, have a great time. finishing an instrumental to nice. a song. So I'll have a song out in the Nova Gear year. Me too. Me too. For a couple years. Bye bye, guys. Bye bye, babies.